So, uh, Kerry, am I, does MIT have a Masters of Applied Technology program? We have it here. It's a Masters in Applied Technology, Digital Technology, and the two specializations are cybersecurity and data analytics. So I've got Vishnu so, here asking, is the Masters in Applied Technology quite heavy in programming? Um, is there an October intake? Um, is this going to be online? Um, till so I think he's offshore. So will it be online delivery till he arrives in New Zealand? Um, is the program 100% based on written exams? Any scholarships? So there's a whole lot of questions that Vishnu has asked us. If you just want to talk about the masters in applied technology, please. Yeah. So at the moment, as most people will understand, we are teaching online as a result in response to COVID-19. But that's only available to um, international students who are in New Zealand. So we don't offer online to um, international students offshore because we can't support it properly. It's really important that um, we have support in place for our students when they're being taught. So we can do that onshore. And I was talking to Arunima, we've um, just been in touch with all of our students to ask them how they're finding the online experience. And the, the feedback so far has been overwhelmingly positive. So students have um, embraced, actually, the opportunity around online. Obviously, we're going to continue to monitor that, and that's something that we'll be um, measuring just to make sure that, you know, students are getting the experience that, you know, they expect to get. Um, so with the, the way that we have the applied technology program set up, we have a postgraduate certificate, a postgraduate diploma, and a master's. So depending on a student's background, they can apply for any one of those qualifications. Um, normally, we believe most students will fit into the postgraduate diploma um, um, scenario. So students going into that would need to have completed a computing-related degree um, and have, I think it is a, a B minus average in their, their final year. The school would also ask that students either can show that they have some knowledge around either cybersecurity or data analytics. If not that, what they would like to know is why students are choosing the program. You'll find a lot of times schools, and I don't think MIT is the only one, mm -hmm. we're really interested in what motivates some one towards why they've chosen the program because that helps us to understand whether they can be successful or not because sometimes we get students who come in and say I'll just do that because that's what someone suggested for me yeah. Yeah. and you know you're the one doing the learning so with those um, postgrad programs and master's programs if students can just you know give some way of showing us why they you know they're interested in the qualification yeah. Um, and I think it's in the best interest for the students, yeah. as well as the provider, to make sure that the student that gets into the course will actually pass the course, exactly. right? Um, I think that's why there's this emphasis on why do you want to do the course, yeah. so you can probably understand that the student will actually make it to the end, because that's yeah. that's the win-win for everybody. Well, nobody, we've all studied, and nobody loves every part of our study. There's always bits that we hate, and we still have to pass it. But if we're really motivated, we'll find ways to, you know, work our way through that. So, you know, I think studying is wonderful, but we just have to be realistic about, you know, how successful people can be. Mm. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. I think there's a few questions coming, Kerry, um, around people that are offshore and they've sought offer letters, um, but they can't sort of start to, because of the immigration scene. And if I understand this correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong. So people that are already with MIT within New Zealand and studying can get onto the online mode and MIT is providing that. But anybody that's offshore, yeah. and I will again put on my immigration hat, and hasn't really started, hasn't got a student visa yet, you wouldn't be able to start online just yet. So I think Gary um, and the others that are listening, this is a space to watch because there's a lot of things that need to go on in the background. There's still conversations that are happening. Yeah to see what's going to happen for those students. Because you don't want to be, and I think no provider would want to start the course and then realize that you can't get an open work visa later on or post-study work visa. Mm. So I think just hang, hang in there, I would suggest.